Hey guys, I'm here in my studio with Dina, and we decided to make some nice kind of simple portraits today. Um, Dina's got a new hairstyle. Um, she wasn't born with purple hair. I know you guys might be thinking that, but uh, she's got a new hairstyle. So uh, instead of going crazy, right, because we talked about different things, I thought it would be cool to do something really simple and then let the hair kind of be bold by itself. Um, and she had this nice gray shirt. Uh, I'm going to shoot both a white and a black background to give some options, but first we're starting off with kind of a nice... Uh, simple, clean, black background shot. Um, I've set my camera at f8, uh, 250, so I wanna get all the light that's in the space gone, and then I'm gonna light her with kind of a traditional, uh, well, it's really a, a two-point light if you think about each fixture, but it's a three-point light because we're gonna use a reflector. So for my key, I have a two foot by three foot Profoto uh, box here, kind of coming across. Now I know that I said that normally when I light female subjects, I light them from the center. Um, but I wanted to do something a little bit more 45 today, a little bit more kind of classic portrait-like with a kind of some shadow pattern to show you guys a little bit of fill because I borrowed from Seth um, the new uh, Last Light Halo compact reflector. So we've got this here. If you guys want to know more about that, he has a video where he kind of assembles it and everything. Um, but I already have it here in the stand. So we've got, uh, it's, this one's white and silver. You can get uh, a diffusion uh, fabric for it as well. Uh, but we're going to use it as a reflector. We have the white side towards Dina. And back here, if you can't see it, is a one foot by three foot strip. This is gonna be our hair, our separation light. We're keeping everything off the background. I don't know, I was looking at my camera. We're keeping everything off the background, and uh, yeah, nice and simple. I'll show you how we build this up. So actually, I'll move this out of the way so you guys can see piece by piece. I'm sure I was out of the frame there, but that's okay. So number one, I'm set at, uh, at F8, 250. Uh, 100 ISO, I'm gonna make a shot here. I'm in capture one. Uh, and we can see we have a black frame. You know, no light is affecting the shot. I'm gonna turn on just my key light, which is in the A group, the soft box. I'm just playing Pac-Man over here. All right, here we go. Uh, okay, so we'll take a shot and look at the exposure. So uh, just look straight at me so they can see the lighting pattern for this one. This won't be a great shot, so don't waste any good expressions. You don't want them to waste all the good expressions in the beginning, right? All right there we go. All right, so uh, yeah, that's, you didn't waste a good one there. That was terrible. Okay, good. So we've got a nice shadow here, nice shadow pattern, yeah, showing texture in the skin. Everything looks nice, but that's way too much shadow for, for a typical kind of shot of a female subject, so I definitely want to fill that in. And you can do it a lot of different ways. You could add another light. Again, I'm going to use this... Uh, this last light reflector. So, white side, bringing it in. Now I gotta be careful here to not uh, too far kind of back because if I do, I'm gonna block my hair light. So I wanna kind of just bring it in tight here. And you're gonna control the power of this basically by how close it is to her. I think right there is probably good. So let's just see how that changes the shot. And we can see that fills in the shadow. If you want more shadow fill, you can just adjust it even more. But let's get the hair light in first, and then we'll kind of finish up everything. So I'm gonna turn on my hair light. Again, this is a B1X as well with the strip in it. Take that shot, and we can see now that we've got some nice you know, highlight coming from the side here. I'll grab my little hand. You know, this is our separation light. We don't want it too hard. Remember, any light coming from the back is gonna be very hard. Uh, as far as throwing shadow, so we don't want it to, you know, be kicking this like, uh, you know, texture of the skin forward. That won't look very good. So um, I'm gonna kind of break this guy in a tiny bit more to get a little bit more reflection in on her face. I'll flatten this out a bit. Plus, I like to hide her. It's always good to hide the model. Okay. There we go. All right, that looks nice. I'm good. I'm using the 85 millimeter lens. Everything looks nice. F8 gives me plenty of sharpness. Um, we talked about earlier that she likes a glowy shot, so I'm actually going to overexpose a little bit. I'm going to give you a 7.1 just because you asked for it. Okay, let's see. All right, so now we're right on the hot side. So just be wary, wary when you do this that you're not going to lose any texture. Um, but it's there. We got skin texture. We're golden. It's sharp. We can see your eyes. And let's shoot a few. So remember, we're just going to work nice and soft. We're just going to shoot a few. That's it. Strong, bold, but approachable. Right, very nice. Good like that, relax. Good, moving around a little bit. You can move this way too. If she moves away from the key light, she's gonna get more into the shadow side. There we go, that's nice. This is the better side of her face, she said, so we'll see, you guys can be the judge. She did, she did say that. She was like, this is my good side. After I set up all the lights, by the way. They always say it after you set up the lights. 
All right, there we go. That's nice. You guys can judge. We'll l let me know online. You know, leave a comment of what side of face, what side of Dina's face we like better, so she'll know for the future. <laughs> That's cute. There we go. Good. Nice and casual. Playing through it. You know, I got the light set to beep when they're ready, so we can kind of see. That's cute. That's that's nice. I like that. You can kind of tilt a little bit. Uh, no hands. No hands. Okay. Good. Did she just? No hands. No hands. <laughs> what are you, the thinker? God. Okay. Sorry. I used to shoot for this catalog, and apparently the guy that did it before me was obsessed with having hands in the shot, and uh, so I had this one. Every time I would use this client. <laughs> Work for this client, they'd be like, no hands! It was just the funniest thing. Because they hated it, but he kept doing it anyways. And that's why he lost the job, I guess. All right, good. Got to listen to your client's needs. All right, let's see. Oh, that, oh, now you're really looking off like you're thinking about something. I like that. Go ahead, you do that. She's like, I saw this. I saw a picture online that looked like this, and I'd like to copy it. Good. Nice. All right, she's definitely on the bright side here. Um, but again... As long as I'm not losing detail in the skin, we're good. I'm actually kind of, uh, we talked about doing a, a variation of this. By the way, I'm going to capture one, as always, uh, in black and white. So I think we'll just do a quick, uh, obviously you can do it after the fact, but when I'm shooting, this is actually a question I get quite a bit. If I'm shooting something and I plan on making it black and white, I tend to try to shoot it in black and white. Am I going to use Cadence Black and White? This is the famous Cadence Black and White uh, profile uh, created by Seth uh, for Cadence. Never can be replicated. Uh, it actually adds a nice kind of almost silveriness to the whole shot. Let's punch in here so we can see her eyeball. There we go. All right, let's give it a, a shot and see what we look like in black and white. So be more black and whitish. Okay. It's important to give good, good, good uh, instruction. Oh yeah, that's totally black and whitish. That's totally blue. Come on, that's not what I mean. <laughs> you can look at me though. Be friendly. Like, I'm in black and white, and somebody put a filter on my camera. It's just like Instagram. I like Sunset, or whatever the filter is. Actually, I don't know any of the names of the Instagram filters. Before I make fun of them, I should learn the names. All right, here we go. There we go. See, that's not a good black and white pose. See, we're learning here. No, so be real serious, actually. Look right at the camera. I know you don't want to be serious, but you can just be soft with your eyes. There we go. That's it. Stop, 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 stop. Breathe, 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 breathe. You're not breathing. Why are you not breathing? I'm breathing. You're going to pass out. You're not breathing. Why are you not breathing? She's not breathing at all. Okay. All right. So we've got some nice, fun black and white ones. And if we decide we want to make them color, obviously, we can still do that because these are raw files. We don't have to worry. Oh, no, my camera's on small JPEG. No, they're raw files. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, we are going to do a shot on white now, so uh, let's do that. Okay, so we switched to the white background. Uh, I happen to be in a studio with white walls, so I just rolled the paper up. But if you were setting this up, you could just simply have another background behind that one, or you put two on the auto poles, however you want to do it, basically. I'm just setting myself up to really quickly switch it. And I had hidden back there uh, my B2 kit, so Provo to B2 with two heads. I've got them blasting at the wall, kicking back, giving me an exposure to make the wall white, right? If you don't light a white wall, then it won't be white. It'll be gray or whatever, depending on how much light's hitting it. Because remember, our camera's set so that none of the light that you guys see in the video camera is affecting our shot. So anyways, the B2 is lighting the wall. Um, I've moved the, the two by three softbox into a more classic position uh, for a female subject right dead center. Uh, and I've got the, the halo compact reflector here. I swung it out on the arm. You may notice how easy it is for me to move that around because it's got a quarter 20 right in the handle. So quarter 20 screw in there right in the head of the, the, the C-stand knuckle, boom, we can move it wherever we like, and we're good to go. You know, classic kind of clamshell-y kind of light. So let's see what this looks like. I'm at 257.1. Okay, so we see, nice and clean, sharp. Again, I'm, I'm keeping it a little bit hot. Uh, makes the skin tone nice and clean. Be a little bit more shoulder for me, because I, I moved in closer to her a little bit too, so I want to have a little bit more shoulder, otherwise she's just gonna make it be a big block. Yeah, there we go. That's good, that's good, that's good. Here we go, we'll shoot a few like this. Dina's like, here I am against white. I like being against white, white is good. It's the best background ever. Good, and we can hear the lights firing when they're ready. Why so serious? She's like, everybody photographs me seriously, and then she, then she looks at me like this. <laughs> there we go, there we go, that's good, that's good, that's good. Fun, 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 easy. And again, I just have these lights, in, even F8, this is kind of one of the advantages of using, keep your shoulders heavy. 
This is one of the advantages of working with studio lights versus, let's say, small flash or even, you know, uh, constant lights on some level is that they're fast and powerful. So I can get exactly the exposure I want and shoot to get all the shots. Because remember, you get paid more per frame. So I want to shoot as many as possible. That noise is basically like the cash register clicking right there. It's like more money, more money, more money, more money. There we go. Don't talk, you're on the camera. <laughs> So yeah, so there we go, nice and clean. And the white is kind of nice, right? It adds a little extra element to it because we've got the, the, the purple hair, or is it like violet? What color would you call it? Let me know in the comments what color her hair is. I'm gonna call it purple though. I like it, it's a mixture of colors. Is it a mermaid? Remember those cuts? Remember the mermaid color? No, okay, well, anyways. Uh, We've got our purple here, it's popping against the, the white background, giving her a nice uh, clean look. And again, against the white background, in this particular situation, I'm not making high contrast light on her, I'm keeping it nice and even to kind of create an overall image that creates that. So we've got two different looks really quickly. It took me, you know, I don't know, three minutes to roll the paper up and move this light into the center. So it gives you a lot of options. If you've got, uh, you know, multiple clients in the day, you keep switching it back and forth. Just note, of course, where your stuff is and you're good to go. Um, let me know if you guys, you know, do this kind of stuff. Corporate headshots, uh, you know, uh, LinkedIn profile pictures, corporate uh, stuff for Virginia because she's the, the CEO of her own brand. Dina, CEO. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe. I will put Dina's information in the comments. So you got, no, not in the comments. In the description so you guys can uh, look her up. And I'll see you next time.